2016 has been a game of hide and seek for the Iowa Western football team. Last week, the team that we've sought out all year long was on display in an absolute dismantling of the number two team in the country. Would they be back for a pink out showdown with Coffeyville? Or will we have to get back to work looking in every nook and cranny for the talented team that the Reaver coaching staff has put together? We're about to find out with the highlights and more on the Iowa Western Football Coaches Show. You can see it next on the Coach Stro Show, only on CBTV 17. From the studios of CBTV 17 at Iowa Western in Council Bluffs, we are set to talk Reaver football for the next 30 minutes. Hello, I'm Jake Ryan with the head coach, Scott Stromeyer. Back-to-back home games for the Reavers. Uh, they will happen twice this season, and Saturday was one of those occasions. It was a big one, the pink-out game against the Red Ravens of Coffeyville, but also coached that game uh, dedicated to another opponent. Of course, the, uh, the awareness for breast cancer and, and the month of October entirely dedicated to breast cancer awareness and raising funds to try to find a cure for that dreadful disease. Uh, a lot of folks battling all types of cancer. Uh, what does it mean to you to personally be able to, I don't know, wear a little bit of pink and kind of bring awareness to that fight? Like, like football, sometimes breast mm -hmm. cancer kind of carries the wagon for all the other cancer awareness. So, uh, you know, you look, you look at the way a football carries, the football team carries an athletic department, sometimes breast cancer awareness kind of carries the way for other types and other forms. Well, I think I don't. I mean, how many years it's been going on? Where like it, within the NFL and the college, it, it, I think uh, it's a high-profile sport where there's a lot of people that follow it. So for a way to uh, bring awareness, I think is great. You know, and we look at it a lot of different ways. Of you know, we play a game and we get upset when we get beat, but there's plenty other. You know, there's people battling the disease that uh, you know. Just that game on Saturday is not not the end of the world, you know, there's so, for us to be able to just show that some of that support to people who've, who've uh, won the battle and uh, to some who are still dealing with it is, is truly an honor. Yeah, absolutely. It was a long day. It was a, you know, we started early in the morning, we finished late at night and, and for all that we went through that day, that day wasn't that bad compared mm -hmm. to some folks that are suffering with cancer and, and those kinds no. of diseases. No, and, and I even said that after the game, you know, I mean, we're disappointed this is, this is difficult, but at the same time, guys, it's a game and there's, there's a lot worse, you know, that people got to battle each and every day to battle for their lives. We're, we should be fortunate enough just to be on the field and playing, well, you know, yeah. win or lose. Yeah. Well, let's take a look at the highlights after a five hour weather delay. It was rain, it was lightning, and of course, uh, everybody back, there's the squeegees. I mean, one thing after another, it just kept coming down. Finally, the Reavers and Red Ravens kick off at six o'clock, five hours after, and it would be the Red Ravens going to work on their first drive of the game. There's a strike down the sideline, driven out of bounds on the far side by McKelty Williams. There is Malik Stanley, and then Malik Stanley, apparently the favorite target of quarterback Coleman Key. He's down near the 10-yard line. And the Reavers, well, the dark side has done it all season long. They would bend, but would not break. Field goal attempt, wide right, no good, and the Reavers would get the ball. Still no score on the board at Titan Stadium. Yeah, you know, I mean, I was, it kind of reminded me of the Butler. You know, they drive down, and, and uh, we stop them, and maybe it took us a little bit to get going. but. And we come out offensively and kind of get some started off good and make a couple mistakes, kind of the way the day went here, we're getting some plays. Well, you saw Lorenzo Pratt, nice run, then a pass to Anthony Turner a little bit high, and then a pass to Nick Easley, who's really come uh, to full circle in his sophomore season. Only had one touchdown last year and a minimal amount of catches, but he does a good job getting the Reavers in position. And then Bobby Patterson, uh, from distance this time, knocks down the field goal. It's 3 nothing Reavers. Well, it was good. Like I said, it was really good to get back on, you know, on top and come away with points. And, uh, um, you know, that's what we really need to do the way our defense is playing. Antoine Barksdale, their top tailback, was uh, kept in check for a little while, but he busts through there for the touchdown. That gives the Red Ravens the 7-3 lead into the second quarter. When it took, I think, a little bit of adjusting for us, they did a good job, and I, I wouldn't say that we came out on fire to start off. And this is kind of what we 
It was really hurting us all day, just making mistakes like this. AJ on the run, loses the handle on it. Red Ravens go to work. The uh, pass toward the end zone, and that one is complete for a touchdown. We didn't see the long 46-yard run that they had on the previous drive, so that made it 21 to three. And then Andre trying to pitch outside on a wet day. Lorenzo couldn't handle it, the scoop and score. Uh, and you wake up, you open your eyes, and it's 28 to three. What happened? That's about what it was. I was shaking myself just to figure out if I was in a dream or not. I've never been a part of that. But, you know, I think the big thing is the if things are going bad. You, you you can't add to it. You got to be a little bit smarter with some of our decisions that we're making and um, can't put our guys in bad positions. Yeah, the defense trying to keep your offense in it. Here's a look for Coleman Key down the sideline and that one incomplete, a little bit overthrown is Again, weather conditions left and right. Late in the half, Andre Nunez scrambling out of trouble. And I thought Andre really was running with a purpose. Nice run there. Yeah, he did, you know, and I think that's what we need him to do. I think that kind of gets you in the rhythm of a game as well. And um, it's just, it's more of so just of consistent. You know, here we had just a botch protection, um, take a sack, which we can't do. It seems like that was the story of it whenever we get something going. Again, the dark side holding. Late in the half again as the Reavers are trying to, I mean, just one score would have changed the momentum of the ball game. And you guys continue to try to fight Nunez again down the middle. This one is incomplete, hits the turf and or actually tipped and intercepted. Yeah. So five <coughs> turnovers in that second quarter. There are too many to count, Coach. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to win many ball games offensively if you're turning it over that way. You know, that's a third and three, our last pick. And yep. then our defense comes up with a big one, you Shaq know, Jones and right there with the um, giving us just giving us a chance. And like I said, the, the big thing is, is you can't you can't win any ball games um, the way in this something you turn the football over like this. AJ hangs it out right into the coverage and then a pick six from about 45 yards out. And you go into the half down 35 to three after this one. How demoralizing. How demoralized was your team? You sit around all day, you walk into a big deficit, into the locker room. Well, I, I mean, it affected them. You know, and I, like I told them at half, we have no play that's gonna score 32 in one, in one, uh, one play. So it's gotta be play by play, series by series to even give yourself a chance. And I was pleased in the second half, as ugly as it started. Um, but you just can't make the mistakes that we made. I mean, we literally we gave them three touchdowns, you know. So you take those three away, 14 to three at half, we can go with that. But um, when you give them that many, you're not going to win many ball games. Yeah, 28 second quarter points down big into halftime. But another 30 minutes of football remaining in Council Bluffs. We'll see what the Reavers can do in the second half. We're back in a moment for more Stro Show on CBTV 17. For more than a quarter century, thousands of Southwest Iowa athletes have relied on this team, Jenny Ed Sports Med. Their sole focus is to prevent, diagnose, and treat your sports injury. They even partner with the surgeons at Ortho West, ensuring you get your own exclusive roadmap back to action. Methodist Jenny Ed Sports Med invites all Southwest Iowa athletes to its free walk-in clinic, open every Saturday morning, August through October. Jenny Ed Sports Med. My life is full of statistics. Thing is, I could have dropped out of school and become one myself, but I didn't because I had people that believed in me. Here's another statistic. 7,000 students drop out every school day. That's one every 26 seconds. It's time that students know that we believe in them. Inspire a student and share your message of support at boostup.org. What do you think it would be like to teach? Chances are, you have no idea. Teachers today are breaking down obstacles, finding innovative ways to instill old lessons, proving that greatness can be found in everyday places, and that you don't need to be famous to be unforgettable. That's what it's like to teach. Wow, these are really good. You act surprised. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. 
From the studios of CBTV at Canesville Center on the campus of Iowa Western Community College, Jake Ryan, head coach Scott Strohmeyer, well, what kind of rah-rah do you try to light <laughs> into your team at half after such a rotten second quarter of play? There wasn't a lot of rah-rah going on, but <clears throat> um, at the same time, what else can you say? You can't get after them when we're down, you know, 35 to 3. I basically said there's no 32-point play. You know, we got to go one play at a time. And, and really, I challenged them to see it's going to tell me a lot about what we have. Not saying that we got to win the game, but we want to find out what we have. If we're going to keep fighting or do you want it to be 70 to 3? Um, so we'll see which way they take. All right, let's take a look at those second half highlights and we will find out exactly which direction the Reavers went in the second half. Obviously the rain's still falling. The Reavers in their blue tops, blue pants, white helmets and the wind. Well, I tell you what, those flags were blowing. The flag on the north side of the field, Coach, it was so wet it wasn't blowing. That's how bad it is. And speaking of how bad it is, there's Lorenzo Pratt out with a shoulder injury in the second half. So the Reavers will go to work. Andre Nunez handoff to, well, they used to use Marquise Hallback and T-Boy White in the second half. There's Marquise on the run. Nunez will roll out here, blindsided, and that ball loose and incomplete, thank goodness. Otherwise, that might have been another scoop and score. So the Red Ravens will take over, and Coleman Keith to work. Nearly throwing the ball. Here's the question, Coach. You're up 35 to three mm -hmm. against a pretty tough opponent. What do you do if you're the coach? Do you throw uh, it around? No, not the way. Not the way they're throwing it around. This, I don't know what. Well, I tried getting an explanation on this one, but you know, those are that's that's the way the game's gone. Generally, in the past, we'll we'll tackle that guy and scoop it and score ourselves. On the field, <coughs> AJ Bush, nice run there, and then again he'll go to work. The left-hander steps up in the pocket and then gets out of trouble and. Just uses acceleration, nice run here, and a great block there. Two blocks, DeAnthony McGriff holding the other one, Austin Aaron in the first. Well, you know, the big thing there was we had, now we're in third and 10, but we were we got a first down, we had a penalty, it moves us back, and we get a good gain, and now we're third and 10, and we drop a ball. Um, I mean, those are, like I said, you can't you can't win ball games without executing. The guys in the middle, Joe Ricker, Royal Silver, getting a quarterback sack there, and Bush getting out of trouble again, looking time to throw, and then as he's, Looking to that far sideline, this is when he's getting into trouble lately, and that one nearly intercepted again. Yeah, that, I mean, that's just, I was holding my breath, you know, and, and then they come with this, but we just can't make those decisions or those types of throws. There's the flea flicker up 32 points, so that all was a questionable call as well, and here's the, the replay of it. And I just said something about it that, you know, getting the Reavers to buy in on the run to open up the pass, so I didn't expect a flea flicker to be coming your way. <laughs> I, I think it caught us all on surprise, you know, really, but, you know, we got to stay home. They, they're trying, like I said, any chance they can to get, get Iowa Western. Some razzle-dazzle from you. Hand off to T-Boy White. Gives it to Nunez. Nunez finds A.J. Bush for the touchdown. I know that you had made a comment about both quarterbacks on the field, and that's just one of a few times that you tried to make it work, and that certainly did. Yeah, you know, we get a touchdown, a big play kind of spark us, and then we get a fumble recovery here. This is This is where now... We needed to do something, you know, and, and get in there and get another touchdown. Good. And now, now you're, uh, you know, you got them reeling a little bit. Even better was Andre, or excuse me, Andrew Van Ginkle uh, being healthy. Here's A.J. Bush pushing, pushing, pushing near the 10-yard line. And uh, again, just tough running from both quarterbacks, Andre and A.J. Yeah, you know, and like I said, now we're in the position here. We got to get these. This is where we have to come away with points and, and we or uh, touchdowns, especially when you're down. and. Um, we didn't. We had to settle for a field goal, which cuts us to 28. That's why we went for it to get into a four-touchdown game. But I'd much rather have a touchdown. There. Absolutely. So again, it's the dark side trying to keep you in it. And again, it's well going out for the easy INT. Akeem Bailey just drifting back on that one. He's done a good job playing center field this year for the Reavers. He has, you know, and he's he's playing extremely well. Um, he's athletic. He goes up and gets balls at, at the highest point and um, really doing a good job. 14 interceptions going into the bye week. That leads the nation in the NJCAA. There's another handoff to T-Boy White. He's a good strong runner out of the state of Iowa. He is, you know, and he's coming into his own. I think it took him a little bit to get to get into the college game, but he gets his opportunity and goes. And Speaking of opportunity, Nick Easley, second chance on that one. There's two times in this game where he looked like he was going to be tackled and he got away and somehow yeah. gained more yards out of it. Yeah, he's he's tough tough to go down. You know, he's staying staying with it, and you know, again, we have uh, we put ourselves in position, and we have a bad uh, a missed assignment that puts us in a negative yardage situation. Then we have a drop ball, um, you know, that that just we're, we're just drive killing. So fourth quarter action now. Coleman Key throwing to the outside, nearly intercepted. That would have been a big one right there. You see Hakeem thinking maybe he had six, but it was just through uh, on a wet day, just through his hands. Yeah. 
and he would have. He had a lot of room there. Um, good, like, good throw, good catch there from Nick to uh, AJ, and we're kind of rolling a little bit here, but it seems like we sputter all the time towards the end. Defense is keeping us alive, though. Barksdale nearly drops that football, and I tell you what, the Reaver defense was not giving up. The offense not giving up either, even though they were sputtering at times. Here's another loose ball, and the Reavers again pouncing on it. So you got your fair share of turnovers. It was just the way they ended in the first half that really shocked you. Yeah, you know, we got our turnovers. Um, the difference is, is they scored on all our turnovers, and we didn't score on all theirs. I mean, uh, you get those, uh, Marquise with a good run there. Yeah, nice run, and then he gets out into the flat and uh, walks into the end zone. A.J. Bush with the TD pass and Marquise with his first receiving touchdown as an Iowa Western Reaver. Yeah, you know, I mean, you need those, and uh, you know, we're, we're still, what is it, I don't even, 21 points or something yeah. like that right now, and um, we had a chance for an onside kick, and we didn't get it, and um, that's just kind of the way the... With the way right. the day went for us. Final score, 41-20. You do get it within three touchdowns, and not a bad overall day for some Reavers, but the turnovers, story mm -hmm. of the game in the second. That second, you wipe that second quarter out, and you guys win the ball game. Unfortunately, that's not the way it works. Yeah, that's why I told them if we could have redos of three or four plays in the second half, we'd be, you know, in good shape. But that's kind of what's been our Achilles heel this year is um, we can't have redos, and, and we got to make better decisions with the football and and be a little bit more consistent. And, and I think our guys are aware of that now, and we got a bye week to kind of get some things figured out. Now, you mentioned the bye week. It's not a good time to suffer a loss like that, but you do end the second half on a high note. Does that help a little bit going into that bye week? Yeah, you know, I think for me, I'm, you never want to have to deal with an, a loss like that for two weeks, but at the same time, um, you know, it, it, it is where, where we are, and now it's really our guys a gut check time to see. I'm opening up some position battles and we're going to let him go for a week and and see who wants to win it because we can't we can't have the similar same airs over and over again but um, you know I'd like I said I'll check to see where our guys are at mentally all right how much did the weather play into it on Saturday do you think well you know you never really want to use that I mean because at the end of the day it comes down to execution sure. but um, you know would they have, sat through it too exactly so. I mean would have I liked to play on a dry field and dry balls and no wind oh for sure I think anybody would but yeah. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we talk about executing, executing, and, and we talked about it on Wednesday and Thursday that we expect bad weather and we got to be prepared mentally for it and, and not check it out. Yeah. All right. Well, it's uh, not the way we wanted it to end, but the bye week, a chance to rest and maybe recoup a little bit. Coming up next, the dark side continuing to be the spark as the Reavers wait for the offense to catch fire. We'll talk with one of the corner stones of the defense. That ranks number one in interceptions this season. Cornerback Hakeem Bailey sits down with IWTV's Joel Devick. It's coming up next on the Coach Stro Show on CBTV 17.
Schedule your campus visit today. Iowa Western, the world is waiting. The Coach Stroh Show continues here on CBTV 17. I'm IW TV student Joel Divick, along with starting quarterback number one, Hakeem Bailey. Welcome to the show, Hakeem. Thanks for having me. Now, you guys had a tough loss and ended up strapping, snapping your 33-game um, home win streak, so it was kind of tough, that loss to Coffeyville. What was the team's reaction to that loss that you guys had? Uh, we were upset, but, you know, that game's in the past, so now we got the bye week coming up. That's what we're looking forward to and get ready for Dodge City. Now you talk about that bye week, um, you got Dodge City on the horizon, but this week kind of a chance to recharge and um, just get set. You guys have some injuries that you're dealing with as well. How do you guys plan to um, just get back in the rhythm and try and get back on winning form once you come back around against Dodge? Yeah, we're going to practice a couple of days and, you know, take some days off, let everybody else get healthy and just watch film on those days off. Now you've been playing well this season. Um, you earned player of the week a few weeks back against Fort Scott with two picks and uh, a solid all around performance. Uh, what are some goals that you set for yourself this year? Uh, I wanted to lead the team in the sessions, you know, lead the nation. And that's something I'm still working on and something I still look forward to. Now, as the dark side, what are some goals you're trying to set for yourselves, like, as a team? As a team, we want to um, be the number one defense in the nation. Really. Right now, we're leading the uh, takeaways in the nation, so that's something good. Absolutely. Now, um, what's your favorite thing about playing on the defense this year? Uh... Well, we are like new, so just building that relationship with them guys is something good, something I like. Um, you've been playing center field basically for the Reavers thus far, four interceptions on the year. Uh, do you think you could play some offense, play some wide receiver <laughs> if called upon? Yeah, I think I could. Uh, your favorite um, wide receiver to go up against in practice? Uh, Anthony Turner. Why is that? Uh, you know, he's big, he's physical, and he's just, every time we go against each other, we like to compete against each other and make each other better. Now, you're not a hometown uh, guy here in Council Bluffs. You actually come from the South, Atlanta, Georgia. What's one of the things you're um, trying to do to adjust and um, get back, uh, or just um, live here in Council Bluffs? Uh, it's, it's really just the weather. Like, once it gets cold, and starts snowing. That's yeah. the only thing. Everything else is okay. Tough to I like it. I have, yeah. Um, has the heat in practice been anything to deal with, or are you kind of adjusting to that now that we got football weather here uh, in October coming up. I can adjust to it. Awesome. It. All right. Well, um, we thank you for joining us on the show this week. You hope, we hope you're able to recharge this week for the bye and that um, Dodge City will be a win for us this week. Coming up after the break, Jake Ryan and the coach will talk about the bye week and the Reavers showdown in Dodge City when they resume play in October. I'm Joel Divick. The Stroh Show will be right back. Savings Bank, you still get personalized customer service. We have identity safe checking with LifeLock, identity theft protection. You get personal mortgage lending to fit your needs now and in the future. You get business banking with the latest technology because saving you time saves you money. At Council of Savings Bank, you get people who answer when you call and local employees who are actively involved in our community. Council of Savings Bank, hometown banking the way it used to be. to the things that can keep us safe. Those we use all the time with hardly a thought. Those that are silently standing by to save our lives. And now, those that we carry with us everywhere we go. Many mobile devices will now bring you wireless emergency alerts, real-time information directly from local sources you know and trust. With the unique sound and vibration, you'll be in the know wherever you are. Well, a tough one for the Reavers on a long Saturday spin at Titan Stadium. Coach Dodge City is next up. They stunned Butler 7-3 in El Dorado last week, and they've still got a game ahead of them this week. What can you tell us a little bit about the Conks? Well, I mean, they're, they return a lot of guys on defense. I think they're one of the better defenses that we'll face in the conference, really athletic. Uh, we got our work cut out for us. I'm not, you know, but with that all aside, we know they're talented. Every team is. We just got to work on some things on our end and, and – um, not so much worrying about what a defense is doing as execute ourselves. Right. You got a, a couple against ranked opponents in a row with Dodge City, and then Garden City comes to our place on homecoming Saturday. And then it's more two more games on the road, and two more games. I mean, 
The season's half over already. I know it's not gone the way, but there's still plenty of opportunities to not only win the conference, but also go bowling and, and post a pretty darn good record by the time all is said and done. Well, for sure. And I think, you know, now, yeah, the first five, it's not where we've all envisioned us to be after five games in the first half. Um, but at the same time, I said, now the first half's over. We got a six game season and, yep. and we want to see how we can do. You fin we'll finish, let's see how we can finish the last six games and, and we're zero and zero. and and see if we can't make a run at it. We, like I said, we still can uh, keep a streak of being Region 11 champs, um, a good bowl game. The Kinney Cup still, uh, you know, we got that game. So, I mean, there's, there's plenty to play. Plus, these guys, you only get to play football for so long. You don't know right. uh, when your last game is. So you, if it's six games or three games, I don't care what your record is, you should want to play. They're all trying to earn opportunities to play at the next level. Absolutely. Well, you can open some eyes. If you can take out a couple of ranked opponents in a row, Dodge City is up first. That will be on homecoming on October the 15th, and a lot of football to play for, and I'm sure that this is a question that, uh, well, you, you really don't like it, but you keep them focused by telling them the goals that they have to, to play for are right there. For sure, you know, and um, just like when we were, uh, when we had Butler coming into town and they were number two in the country, now we got a team that's all ha you pumped up because they just moved up to number 10 in the country, and... Um, you know, the, the, we'll be motivated to play. We got to go out there. It's a long drive, but at the same time, like I said, you got an opportunity. If we think we're as as good as we potentially can be, let's go play. All right, three games at home, three games on the road. The Reavers will uh, do what they can do to win them all. And of course, uh, we'll be back on the 15th. We did have a pretty good tailgate party uh, with blues band Us and Them performing, so we want to thank them for coming out on Pink Out Saturday against Coffeeville. Uh, they deserve a couple follows on Facebook if you enjoyed them performing at the Reaver Tailgate Village. And there's a, a little bit of confusion on Tailgate Village, so let's clear some things up. Uh, it's free. You can go for free. There's no charge to enjoy the tailgate that Barley's and Glory Days put on for you. The $5 that's on the signs is to park in the lot, and that is a donation to the Reaver softball team. So if you don't want to park in the tailgate lot, you don't want to donate that 5 bucks. understandable, park in the other lot for free and come on over and uh, join us. We'll have a lot of entertainment on a homecoming Saturday, so make sure you come out and add to the experience on game day Saturdays. All right, next, uh, next home game, October 15th, but we will be on the road on October the 8th after this bye week. It will be a 12 o'clock pregame on 89.7 The River, and then NJCAA TV will pick it up uh, along with the kickoff about 10 minutes until kickoff, which is at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Well, thanks to all of our guests that stopped by today. For our uh, for the head coach, Scott Strohmeyer, for cornerback McKean Bailey, and of course for Joel Divick, IWTV sports media student, and all the other students that make this show possible. I'm Jake Ryan. We'll talk with you again on October the 8th for the Reavers' next game as they take on the Conks of Dodge City. Until then, wear blue, be loud, and go Reavers. <laughs>